First off, I want to thank you for purchasing the Shopping List System template for Notion. When you made your purchase, you found this video on your instructions page. And what I'm going to do is show you how to add it to your account, how to get around, how to customize it, how to use it, and even how to share it with your family. So let's just jump right in and go through how we get started. Now Notion is a free application. You do not have to pay for it. They have upgrade features, but you guys should not have to hand over a penny to Notion. Now you might be already using it and you already have added this, and that's great. If not, hey, no problem. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. When you click the link in the instructions, it's going to have opened this page. This is what you should see. All you have to do is hit the dupl duplicate button. You're going to see a note that says it's duplicating it to the different Notion account. And boom, here we are. Now we are in the system. So we have our Notion account right in front of us. Um, now we can go through and customize and do what we want and really make it our own. So the first thing you're going to see are images under quick navigation. And this is going to help you get to the different sections to help you create and use your list. Because the shopping list itself is what you use in the store, the fridge, household and personal care sections, that is where you go to add items to your list. So they all work together. So the, let's go through each of these pages. So the shopping list, we pop over here. Um, what we're going to see is everything that is added to our shopping list. Right now it's empty because I haven't added anything. The first page or the first sort you're going to see is shopping list and it short sorts everything alphabetically by item name. Apple, banana, coconut, those would be sorted ABC. It doesn't take into account your store. It doesn't take into account your department. But what we want to have is everything alphabetical because then it makes it easier when we get ready to finalize our list and to choose our store. And we'll go through that in a little bit. Once we have our stores identified for our items, we can click on the list by store and we can see every item that we want is going to be listed first by department and then alphabetically within that department. So it helps you really find what you're looking for. So if you happen to pop into Target on your way home from work to get something, you can quickly look on your phone and see if there's anything else that someone in your family's added to your list so that you know what to buy. You also can look at your list by department and by department then it sorts it alphabetically inside of that department. So if you are picking up diapers and you turn around and you're wondering, well, I wonder if I need any more baby food or do we need any wipes, you know, other baby items, you could pull up your list by department and see all the other baby items needed, whether they're at that store or not and decide if you wanted to get them. So it makes it really convenient. Now each of these pages does have a blue banner that says back to main dashboard just to help you get there a lot easier. So I go back to main dashboard. Now we'll just pop into the fridge and pantry. The fridge and pantry is actually all of your food. So just anywhere that you might have food, freezer, deep freeze, whatever locations you use to keep your family's food. There is an instruction section that you can expand, kind of just gives you a quick detail on how to use it. There are all of these different departments and if you click the down arrow by each of them, you're going to see all sorts of foods listed in each. I'll show you how to customize that in just a little bit. Go back to the main dashboard, household, exact same thing. Everything is broken down by department. We can customize this in just a couple of minutes. And the same thing with personal care. Once again, we can see all these different personal care items are listed for us. Let's go back to the main screen. Now, as you scroll on the home screen of the system, you're going to see this section that says index. These are different pages that make everything work. So we don't want to delete this. Please don't delete it. If you do, it's okay. You would just, if you delete it, you can pop into your trash and there's a restore button and you can restore it. Really easy to do. Or you can easily pop back over into the instructions page, find that link that originally got you set up and re-add it to your Notion account. You can do that. All right, so that's basically how we get around. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to customize everything. And the first section we're going to look at is going to be personal care. Now in the personal care, we've got these different departments and we may realize that um, you know, I don't have any babies in this house anymore, so I really don't need a baby section. 
that's no problem. If you find a department that you don't need, you can completely remove it. If you hover, there are going to be six dots next to the arrow and it says drag to move or click to open. We click on that and you can hit delete. And now we can see that the baby apartment's deleted. If you realized, oh, I did that by mistake. If you click over here on these three dots and hit undo, it'll bring it right back. So it's easy enough for you to undo anything that you have done throughout this entire system. So let's go um, under body care. Now, one item is on here is deodorant. And there are so many different brands and you know of deodorant out there and even different scents and varieties or styles, whatever you want to call it, of deodorant. So you might have a teenage son who uses Degree and a teenage daughter that uses Dove Cucumber and you use Dove Powder scent. And so you want to make sure that if you're going to have somebody add deodorant to the list, we need to know which deodorant it is. Because if I only add deodorant, I'm going to be at the store going, okay, but which deodorant do I need? Who needed it? So what we can do is we can really add that customization we're looking for. So if I hit this new button at the bottom, I can do Dove Cucumber Deodorant. And maybe I also use Dove Powder Deodorant. So now I have both of those there. I can slide this little thing over, change the spacing, make it all fit. So it allows me to add each of those items that my family uses. Now you can then come through this list again. Like I said, it's pre-populated, but there might be things you never use. Like you may never use body spray. If you want to click on these dots and hit delete, we can see body spray is now gone from the list. You might even like that it says body wash, but you're just thinking, oh, I just want to change it to be um, suave body wash. And what's really cool is as you guys type or edit or do anything, it's automatically putting everything in here in alphabetical order, which makes it super, super convenient. So this is what you will go through and do is you will go through and add all these items. You can change the title on the department. So if this is, you don't want to call this feminine care, you want to call it personal products. I don't know, whatever you want to call it, you sure can. You can always edit these names. Now inside here, it will still say Fenn and Care, but at least it'll help you identify that. And we're going to go through how to change these um, uh, these things in just a couple of minutes. So, oh, ignore my typo. I just realized I spelled deodorant wrong. <laughs> it's been a long day. All right, so we're going to go back to the main dashboard. Let's pop over into household and you could do the same thing. So under laundry, it might be that, okay, I use Tide free and gentle pods. And I also use Tide hygienic liquid. I don't know if I spelled that right. So we're gonna see those items got added. And again, they're put in alphabetical order for me. So let's say I know I don't ever use scent booster, sanitizer, or fabric softener. I can click all of those, which is nice, and select multiple items and hit that trash can and delete them all at once. So there's more than one way you guys can change those. All right. So now let's go into the fridge and pantry. Um, we're going to go through adding a new department and we're also going to go through combining these departments. So the first one we're going to talk about is combining. So let's say that you see this baking and you also see oils, vinegars, and spices. And the way that you shop or the way your store is laid out, baking, oils, vinegars, and spices are all together. And so you'd rather have them listed collectively as a single category. We can absolutely do that. So the first thing we have to do is we have to edit the baking one. So if I hit the down arrow to open this, I'm going to change this to baking, oils, Oops, vinegars, if I can type, and spices, okay? I'm going to, I can leave this baking. This doesn't really affect anything if I want. I'm gonna just go ahead and take this baking, it's called the same thing. Oils, vinegars, spices, okay? So now that's changed, we can see that's there. Now the last thing we have to do is we have to change this department name here. If we click 
on department. Here I can recall it. Let's see if I want to call this aisle. You know, I can call it what I want, but I'm going to leave it department. I can edit property. I'm going to find baking is here. If I hit this little arrow, I can change the text on here. Baking, oils, vinegars, and spices. Now, one thing I want to point out is you cannot use commas in here. Um, I could change the color if I wanted, etc. And it's going to change that. So now all of a sudden, you probably noticed that it stopped showing just those items. That's because we changed how the filter was looking at things. So one more step is to add the filter back in. So if we hit these three dots, we go into filter and we filter by department. And then we find that baking, oils, vinegars, and spices. And we click on that. And now all my items are back. And it's only those items. All right. So that's how we can change the title and what we're going to have to do. And you have to do that no matter which list that you are making the edits on, you would have to repeat that. Now, let's say I'm wanting to, again, to add these, to combine this oils, vinegars, and spices, I'm going to have to open that. I have to change the category for each of these items. Okay. Because it's right now under this thing called this oils, vinegars, and spices. And as I click, it's going to be moving them. So one thing I know I added was I moved this beef bouillon was down there and now it's in this section. Once I move everything, I can just delete that. And now it's gone. Okay. So now let's say that we want to duplicate a, um, we want to add a new category. So with some, we have snacks and candy and you want to have a, um, a sweets, a sweet section and a, salt, a salty section. Let's just say that's what we want. So what we're going to do is we would hover on here and we click these three dots and then we'd hit duplicate. And it'll take a second and it'll come up. So let's call this um, salty snacks and sweet treats. Okay. So if I open this up, it still says snacks and candy. So I need to rename that to salty snacks and then what I want to do is under department I'm going to edit property I'm going to add something in I'm going to call it add in a salty snacks item and because I already know I'm going to have a sweet one I'm going to go ahead and add my sweet snacks one in too I can add more than one at a time if I want to it really doesn't matter I can then reorder these if I want to let's say we still want to put them down towards snacks and candy and just drag and drop it where you want it to go. That way then it'll just be sorted in that order within the department. <clears throat> okay. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and change this from snacks and candy. We can go to salty snacks. Okay. Then we have to change our filter so we only see the salty snacks. So if we hit these dots and we click on filter, and then we can see it's already sorted by department. I can add in salty snacks. And so now we can see they're both here. Well, I don't want everything that has snacks and candy to show. I only want my salty snacks, so I can uncheck that. And now only my salty snacks are here. Then if I open up the sweet treats, we can see, look, all of those other items are in here. And we can do the same thing. We can change this to sweet snacks. I'm just pretending these are sweet. I know these aren't. Come back over here into the filter and change this to sweet snacks. Turn off snacks and candy and now only my sweet snacks will show. So that's how we can create new categories and things like that. And I just noticed there's a typo in here. I will get that fixed on the main one so you guys shouldn't have to see that. Um, but yeah, that's how we can actually customize this portion of it. Now, the last customization is going to be our stores. So if we go over into our shopping list, that's where we'll customize the store. And if we click in the menu on store and then edit property, we're going to see I have four stores listed. You might want to just change grocery store's name to Publix. Let's say that's where you shop, is at Publix. So now we have that. It could be you also shop at Trader Joe's. Uh, maybe you also shop at Whole Foods. The different places you shop, you can absolutely add them in. You can rearrange these too. So let's say that you Publix is the most frequently place, shopped place, um, followed by Target. You could just have them at the top of your list. So when you go to select your store, they're the first things that you see. 
You also could change the color. Let's say I want to make Whole Foods a gray instead. I can make the change the color of that. All right. So that is how we get everything customized. Now let's go through how we actually use this system. So again, the idea is to put this on your different phones and devices so that as family members think of something they need to add, they can add it for you without having to write it on a notepad in the kitchen or trying to text you, whatever the case may be. You also can use this when you are creating your weekly shopping list by grabbing your laptop, phone, whatever, and adding everything to it. So we're going to the fridge and pantry. And let's say under here, I know I need to get some blueberries. And I know I need some flour under baking. Uh, there are salty snacks. I need some almonds. And let's say under breakfast, I want to get some Captain Crunch. Okay. So I have those items. Then I know on household that, oh, I know I'm out of like laundry detergent and I know I needed this Tide Free and Gentle Pods is what I needed to get. I'm also out of dog food. So I can add everything that I want to my shopping list. Okay. So now we'll go into the shopping list. And we're going to see that the shopping list, everything is here and it's alphabetical. So now I can go through and decide how much I need. I need one bag of almonds. Um, here I need a pint. And then I can just put just one and one. You can just come through. Uh, I don't know if this is a size, but you can add size to it, whatever you want. And you don't have to put anything in here. You can leave it blank. Um, it's just if you know that you need a specific size or a, a certain quantity, absolutely add it in. But again, don't feel like you have to add the amount. It's just there in case it's needed. Then we can decide which store. So let's say I know I want my almonds there. Um, Target had that on sale. And I'm going to get a Walmart had that a better deal. Aldi, Target and target. So I can choose whichever store I want. So now when I look at my list by store, we can see everything's broken out. So here's target, everything I need to buy there, everything at Walmart, Publix, etc. Then we can also look at that list by department. We can see here's all of my breakfast foods. Here's all of my baking items. So you can see that as well. Now as I'm shopping in the store, as I add on something to my cart, I just check this. Just click on the little blue check mark to say I've got it. And then when your list is empty, then you are done shopping, my friend. <laughs> Pretty easy, right? Okay, so now the last thing we want to talk about, I mentioned about having your family work with you to uh, share what it is they need and the items that they want to have added to that shopping list. Because the reality is that Again, we're busy people, and so we want to make sure that everything we need is added and we aren't wasting our time at the store or forgetting those must-have items because there's nothing worse than when you get home and your 14-year-old says, hey, mom, I forgot to tell you I needed fill in the blank. It just gets really frustrating and annoying. So what you can do is once you have this all set up the way you want, there's this little share button and you can invite people. So you would add their email addresses in here and then they will get an email that's going to ask them to be a part of this. And so it'll become a collaborative list so everybody can use it. They can customize, they can add things, they could remove things, they can add to the list, remove from the list, etc. So it becomes truly interactive and really simplifies your life and takes a lot of that stress away as a family. Now there you guys go. The way that you can get this all set up, customized, and use the system, if you have any questions or you have any issues or you need some help at all, please pop over into your Etsy dashboard and contact me. I know this stuff can be confusing and sometimes you want to have a feature, you know, work the way that you want, but you can't quite get it figured out. Let me help you out with that. So with that, I hope you have a great day and happy shopping.